Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm going to be attempting to read for 24 hours again. I do this every single month. I don't know why you guys are surprised, if you are even surprised seeing another one of these videos in your subscription boxes. I love doing 24 hour readathons so 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 much and I cannot wait to do another one. I'm actually not going to be starting for a little while. I'm going to go see one of my very best friends and then another one of my friends in a movie tonight which I'm so 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 excited about. It's currently like 4 o'clock and the movie's at 6.15 so I'm going to start as soon as I get back home and that's my plan. I didn't think my TBR was going to be all that ambitious and now I'm looking at it and I'm like oh no this is really really ambitious. I just pulled some books from my bookshelves that I felt like reading and there's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. So first of all I think we should get into my TBR for the video which I wanted to film before I go see the film. The film I'm seeing is an Evil Dead movie. It's Evil Dead Rise, which is a horror movie, and I'm going to be terrified, especially because I know my partner is going to be going to bed much earlier than me, and I'm going to be staying up in a dark room by myself reading. So on my TBR, there are a few comfort reads that I feel would be really good to start with. I haven't decided what I'm going to start with. I feel like it's just going to be based on my mood after seeing my friends get chopped up in a horror movie. Actually, first of all, let's start with the books that I'm currently in the middle of. I'm currently reading three books and these are three that I really would love to finish during this 24 hour period. So first of all, I'm in the middle of Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park. I'm up to page 82 and I believe this is like a just over 200 page book. So I definitely don't think it's too ambitious to try and finish this one. I imagine it will only take me like an hour and a half or so. This is a, I believe, literary fiction. It's a contemporary and it's set in Seoul in South Korea. We follow our main character who it doesn't have a name. I believe he's just kind of known as the narrator right now. And he is gay and we follow his entire life basically. He's also a writer and in the first part we followed him and all of his antics with his best friend Jaehee who was very promiscuous, like a party girl. And I loved her so much, honestly. And we're not seeing her so much in part two. I really loved her. When I first like read that first part, I was like, this is gonna be a five star book. Now that it's less about their friendship and more just about our narrator's life, I'm a little bit less invested. I think he's, maybe getting into a romance right now. It's a very slice of life and we're following his life. It's all very stream of consciousness. I definitely want to try to finish this one and yeah I don't know when I'll get to it. It might be what I pick up like second after I finish my first book but I definitely want to finish this. I've been in the middle of it for only a few days but yeah it'd be great to get this done. I'm also in the middle of my Patreon book club book which is All's Well by Mona Award. I'm not very far through at all but I would love to read more of this. I'm really really loving this. I'm on only like 40 pages in and already I'm like five star vibes. It is a horror novel. I believe we follow our main character Miranda who is a college theatre director and she kind of like low-key hates her students and she's putting on All's Well That Ends Well for reasons that are really personal to her but all of the students would rather put on Macbeth and they're kind of like mutinous about it. Our main character also deals with quite a lot of chronic pain and I feel like the writing about all the chronic pain is superb. It is amazing. Like I don't experience chronic pain but like reading this I'm like oh my god I feel it. I'm feeling a phantom pain like reading about our main character's pain. It is so well written and I'm really enjoying it and I cannot wait to see where the story goes. So this one is definitely going to be a high priority for me during the 24 hour readathon as well. And then I'm also in the middle of a Kindle Unlimited book called Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. I'm only about 20% of the way through but I'm also really enjoying this. All the books are so different. This one is really fun and silly. It's like a reverse harem romance. Our main character Layla is 28 and has never been in a relationship but she has these three single dudes who have a podcast called Three Single Guys that live across the hall from her and she I believe is seeking like a relationship advice from them and maybe like I think they take her on a few dates and stuff. Like I said I'm only 20% of the way through but already it's so fun like the writing style is so silly. It really reminds me of like New Girl but she's got like a relationship with all three of them and all the characters are so well fleshed out as well like I know exactly who all these men are and I'm still also really early on in the book so I'm really excited to read more of this one as well. 
well. It's got that classic like British sense of humor, which I really love because it is set in England. So yeah, this will also be another really easy one to just like pick up and I'm really enjoying it. It's so fun at the moment. And then I have this giant stack of books that I picked up from my bookshelf that I might want to read. So first of all, I picked out some comfort reads or reads that will just be easy and like fun after seeing the horror movie. And I picked out these three, which I think are best described by that like description of comfort read. So first of all, this indie romance that I bought recently called Along for the Ride by Mimi Grace. I believe it is an enemies to lovers road trip romance. And that's kind of all I know. The cover is one of the most beautiful covers I have on my bookshelf. So really keen to read this one. It looks so good. And it will also just be a really fun read that's like not too serious in between some of my more like serious reads. I also picked out, I think I'm leaning towards starting with this one, but it is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuke Natsukawa. And this is about a little bookstore in Tokyo that is like kind of dying or kind of going out of business but then there's like this little cat that comes along and helps save it i don't even know but it's like magical realism it looks so cute so i feel like this will be a really comforting book to read like in the early hours of nighttime i suppose because i do want to try and stay up a bit later especially because i'm starting at nighttime but yeah i feel like this will be really cute and also i have chosen Gleam by Raven Kennedy, which is the third book in the Play to Present series, which is a series that I am absolutely adoring at the moment. I devoured the second book and this is book number three. It's definitely more of a chunkier one, but I read these so fast. Like they're so easy to read and I just speed through them. But basically the first book is like a King Midas retelling. Our main character, Oren, she is the king's like favored concubine but there have been so many twists and turns throughout the series well in book one and book two at least i believe there's gonna be some sort of uprising i know that people have said it's a fantasy romance and so far in the first two books there hasn't really been any romance but i'm excited to see if one like sparks up in this book so this is also a good option for me to read i think also because i just am on a fantasy kick right now i thought maybe i could read white hot kiss by jennifer l armentrout which is the first book in a ya fantasy series because i don't know why i'm just loving that genre right now and I believe this will be like a kind of junk food read which I'm also really excited for like I can get through this really fast and I just love reading as much as possible when I do 24 hour readathons like it's not like a competition or anything I'm not trying to like prove anything by reading all these books and reading really fast but I do just like love marathoning like all these like great books or just like cheesy and like fun trashy books I don't know I just love it. I also, a few months ago, read this first book in a romance duology, uh, Full Tilt by Emma Scott. So I was thinking maybe I could read All In, which is the second book in the duology. First book was absolutely fucking heartbreaking. I don't want to say anything about it because it will absolutely like spoil the whole thing. But I'm interested to see what the second book is like. Like I said when I first finished Full Tilt that because it destroyed me, I don't wanna like read this one because I feel like I won't like how this one's going. But then so many people have said that like this is also really good. So I might. I'm, it's tempting. I put it on my TBR, but like I'm not sure if I will pick it up, but I could if I wanted. And then finally the last book that I'm interested in, which I've mentioned in a couple of reading blogs recently, but never actually got round to, is Sign Here by Claudia Luck. So if I finish this horror movie and I'm like, actually, you know what? I'm in the mood for more like devilish satanic vibes. This is it. I believe we just follow a main character who works in like one of the circles of hell. I don't really know anything else about it, but I've heard such amazing things and this looks so up my alley. So I do really want to read this one as well. So that is my incredibly ambitious TBR. I don't even know how many books are on here, but yeah. So I'm going to go get ready to go to the movies. And basically I will check in with you as soon as I get home. I will let you know when I'm starting. I will let you know everything, what I'm starting with, all those vibes. I'm also doing some reading sprints with my patrons during this 24 hour period. So I just imagine I'm gonna have so much fun and get so much reading done. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy the vlog. This is literally an over 10 minute intro. I hope you guys enjoy the vlog and I will see you very, very soon. Hello besties. I just got back from the movie, Evil Dead Rise. So proud of my friends that were in it. So, so, so proud. It was so, so good. But emetophobia girlies, don't go see that movie. <laughs> oh God, please don't see that movie. There was, uh, mm, there was one stage where I, 
I genuinely thought that I was going to throw up. Anyways, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. So comfort reads are definitely in need right now. It's 10 to 9. So I'm going to get all set up. I'm going to get a beverage. And I definitely think I'm going to be starting with the cat who saved books. Because I just feel like this is what I need. It's 218 pages of just magical realism, goodness, a talking cat in a bookstore. Like... This is absolutely what I need. So I'm definitely gonna start with this. I'm gonna go get a drink, hang on. Because it's nighttime and I know I'm gonna be staying up quite late, I'm gonna have one of my favorite Starbies double shot espresso in this little can. It's mocha flavored. And I'm gonna start. I know that Ben's gonna play some video games with his friend, so I'm just gonna get cozy on the couch while he plays video games. I also have some reading sprints to do in an hour with my patrons, and I just feel like this is the way to go. So I'm going to start this and let you guys know how it goes. 24 hours of reading starts now. I imagine this video is probably already 10 minutes long and I'm only starting my reading now. So enjoy the movie, I suppose. Enjoy the really long video that I'm about to get into. Hello, my loves. So it is about five minutes till I start my Patreon reading sprint. So it's been basically an hour, I guess, of the readathon. It's been like 55 minutes. I started this, obviously. I'm on page 78 of the Cat Who Saved books. I'm really, really enjoying it. We follow our main character, Rintaro. And he's a high school boy whose grandfather, who owned a small secondhand bookshop called Natsuki Books, his grandfather has just recently passed away. And so now Rintaro has to like move and live somewhere with his aunt and essentially he's just finishing up at this bookshop and making sure that things are in order before he eventually has to leave it and then one day a talking ginger tabby cat comes in called tiger and he's basically like before you go you need to come with me on these missions to save these books and so right now i'm in the middle of like the second little adventure the first adventure was rintaro and this cat going to save these books from a man who claims to read 100 books a month and after he does that he keeps them like imprisoned in these glass cases purely so he can just like show off to everyone how many books he's read the booktube vibes <laughs> no offense to all booktubers and also no offense to myself but like <laughs> the whole thing was like you don't really love books you just like love people thinking you read a lot of books and I'm like oh my god which is so not the case for like booktube but I do know that that's like a criticism for booktube is that it's basically like a big dick swinging contest about how many books you read I know that people think that even though I personally don't think that but like reading that I was like oh my god the irony of me trying to read as many books as possible in a 24 hour readathon which I'm putting on the internet life imitating art oh don't perceive me but that chapter was also really really nice like there was this one little passage or this one little quote that i saved where rentaro is talking about like conversations that he had with his grandfather when his grandfather was alive and uh this thing that his grandfather would always say to him which was it's all very well to read a book but when you're finished it's time to set foot in the world and i just thought that was nice and like just a nice reminder for someone like me who kind of reads for a living in a sense to be like yeah like you know booktube and reading and i love books so much it is my hobby as well as like a source of income for me but sometimes it is nice to just be reminded that there is a world out there and to leave my small little house and actually experience the world i don't know i think it was really good advice <laughs> And I think just a nice reminder for all my readers out there that sometimes overconsumption can be a thing and to remember to get some fresh air. I don't know, it was just, it was lovely and a good reminder for me, I think as well. But yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. I do think that there is some funny business going on with the cat. Rintaro constantly talks about how the cat is really reminding him of his granddad and how like, you know, the, their way of speaking and like how kind of sassy this cat is and a bit like, not so much rude, but just like, you know, he doesn't sugarcoat things when he, when he speaks. I think there might be some funny business going on there, but it's just nice and all these like adventures that they go on, there is this like air of magic about them and I'm just really, really enjoying it. It's absolutely gonna be a comfort read for me in the future, I think. I mean, it's a comfort read for me now. It's just so good, so sweet, and exactly what I was looking for. I think I will definitely finish this in the reading sprints that I'm about to start, and then I will decide what I move on to next, but this is really sweet, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So, I have two minutes before I need to start, maybe less than that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and I will let you know how I go in the sprints. And if you are one of my patrons and you were in the sprints, 
I love you. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for reading with me. Hello, my loves. It is 12.30. I have gotten dressed into pajamas. I have got some leftover Easter chocolate. Yes, I know it's been weeks, but I like to savor my chocolate. I've made a coffee, it's over there, and I finished this. I think I probably could have finished it sooner, but like when we were doing reading sprints, we just got into some like very deep chats, and I feel like that definitely took up a lot of time, but I finished this. It's taking me like 15 minutes to process. All I have to say is I fucking love this book so much. This is like new favorite. Like I teared up, but not even because it was sad, because I love books so much. This reignited my love for books, even though the flame wasn't even out in the first place. And this was just incredible. Like more discussions to be had, of course. One of the kind of things that they had to do to save books was because there was this guy that like kept shortening books to like synopses so people could like read books faster. And like, don't worry loves, the irony is not lost on me. That I'm reading this during a 24 hour readathon where it's like about reading books fast but like it was just such an amazing reminder of like kind of how to enjoy a novel I think it was such an amazing reminder of like why people read books what books are really about it was a reminder about like being a good person being empathetic it was just amazing <laughs> It's like a new favorite book. I think every single, at first I said to my patrons on my live show, at first I was like, I think everyone who like consumes book content on the internet needs to read this book. And I stand by that. But I would now say that just any book lover needs to read this book, like any book lover. Will some people find it cheesy? Yeah, probably. But I don't even care that it is like a little bit cheesy. I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. Like I love this. I love this so much. It was just like my perfect, my perfect little story. It is exactly what I needed. It was amazing. Five stars, obviously, literally five stars. I love it so much. This, you will be seeing this again because I am gonna make it a mission to reread this every single year. It's literally 220 pages, you know? Like I, I'm gonna reread this every single year. This will be in my 2023 favorite books of the year in January next year. Like I want, the words in this book like tattooed onto my brain. Am I being dramatic? I don't even care if I'm being dramatic. This is your sign to go buy this book and read it. I think I convinced a couple of people on sprints to buy it as well and I'm so happy. But now I don't know how much longer I will read for because I am a little bit tired. Like I won't lie, I'm, I am feeling a little bit tired. I do keep yawning, but I do want to keep reading for a bit like, and we'll see if my coffee does anything. Usually coffee and caffeine doesn't really wake me up or affect me at all. Like I can drink coffee and then have a nap. But while I drink that and eat a little bit of chocolate, I want to read something. I think I'm going to move on to just something really fun and easy. White Hot Kiss, which is, I said before, a white YA like paranormal romance. I think it's like fantasy. Follow our main character Layla who is going to, I don't know, some school. She's trying to be a normal teenager but she's like half gargoyle, half demon and she's got all these like abilities. And I think there is some sort of love triangle. I think she can't kiss anyone because if she kisses anyone she kills them. That's kind of fun. Okay, we're gonna give this a go. I am in like a bit of a fantasy era. I've really been loving the Plated Prisoner series. I loved Once Upon a Broken Heart and can't wait to read more of that series. So let's give another kind of like easy fantasy series a go, I think. And we'll see if I get obsessed with this one as well. So yeah, I'm gonna start this after I go on Goodreads immediately and rate this five stars. But so far, such an amazing start to the readathon. And I'm actually so excited because I'm like, oh no, it's like, already like past midnight blah 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 i have a whole day of reading to do tomorrow into the evening i'm fine it doesn't even matter and also it's not about reading as many books as i can it's about enjoying every moment that i am reading which i am and it's great sorry this book has made me like super i don't know it's 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 done stuff to me i'm going to continue on with this i probably won't finish it tonight i'll probably go to sleep before i finish it i think even if i don't finish it i will still probably read my kindle in bed for a little bit either way i'll let you know how i go and we'll let you know if I have any updates. And before I go to sleep, I'll, I will say goodnight and let you know how much I've read. Guys, it's 2.20 a.m. I've read just over 100 pages of White Hot Kiss and I'm so tired. So I'm gonna go wash my face and then hop into bed and probably read my Kindle book and said, I do really wanna go super in depth with this because I have a lot of thoughts, but like I'm just far too tired right now to do it. So I will be doing it first thing in the morning, but, um, it's not promising. 
it's like fun but then there's a few things that i like can't excuse i'll tell you all like the kind of like summary like the vibe of the book and also my thoughts in the morning but i'm gonna wash my face and then read my book faking with benefits on my kindle in bed and hopefully i'll have more positive things to say i know i'll have more positive things to say about that hopefully i read a bit more of that before i like pass out so i actually have something to talk about in the morning other than this but yeah i'm gonna set my alarm for 8 30 so i feel like that gives me some good time to sleep i'll see you in the morning I did set my alarm for 8 30 but i think i got up like just before nine and did some more reading so i've been reading for an hour and i'm feeling good i'm feeling really good i'm really excited to get the day going like you know just get the ball rolling on all of the books that i want to read today or not even just like the amount of books but just like all of the reading that i'm gonna do it's time to discuss all of my feelings on this obviously i continue with this this morning I am now on page 187, so I'm nearly halfway through. So it's definitely like a quick read. I think the pacing actually is really good. If I'm gonna be positive, I think the pacing of this is really, really good. Like the way the story is progressing. Let me tell you what it's about. So we basically follow our main character, Layla. It's an urban fantasy. So there are elements of the real world in here and then also more like fantasy elements. Layla is half demon, half gargoyle and humans don't know that demons exist but they know that like gargoyles exist and they're called wardens and they're basically like protecting the city so i don't really know why like humans know that wardens exist but don't know that demons exist when like wardens are protecting humans from demons like i don't really understand that element of it but i'm sure i'll find out it, it seems a bit weird it just seems a bit weird that humans don't know that demons exist anyway Layla really wants to be like a normal high school girl and she's like in love with this warden boy who's like the same age as her I think maybe a bit older she lives with all the wardens because she was adopted I think she has like these powers where she can see souls so she's really useful to the wardens and she can like tag demons so then the wardens can go out and like fight them yeah basically this really like sexy thing <laughs> called an upper demon this guy has like come and like joined her at her high school and she's kind of keeping him secret from the wardens and like the warden that she's a crush on i think she's learning more about herself a little bit and more about her like demon side right now and i think it's basically just going to be one of those stories where she realizes that she's like playing for the wrong team i'm really getting the sense that that's going to happen because there are some like really awful wardens that we've met in this book and you know so far the demons have kind of just been like a bit whatever except for Roth who is like the hot demon that she's like becoming friends with in a sense kind of like enemy to lovers vibes I think there is going to be a love triangle between her and the warden Zane and Roth already I'm team Roth like he's great I actually do genuinely like him reading this book which is why I'm going to continue reading I think when I read the first 50 pages I was like oh this could be a DNF this could be a DNF really fast but I didn't give up and I kept reading and like there are elements that I am enjoying but there are still elements that I'm like no first of all this book was published in 2015 but it's giving 2008 like there was some really ableist language our main character talked about how she had this really long pale hair and she was like I feel like everyone's everyone's always staring at me because of it I feel like an albino or whatever and I'm like okay and then like she called someone a spaz or whatever and it's just like all right cool and then there's a lot of like girl on girl hate there's so much of it like she called someone a hoe bag or whatever like it just you know really classic like 2008 ya stuff i'm enjoying the fantasy elements but i think because of all those reasons that i've just talked about i'm really not so much enjoying the like urban elements like the stuff of her at high school and her with her friends but just because of the way they speak to each other this it's a bit slut shamey but yeah i think as far as a fantasy goes apart from the one thing which is just that i don't understand why humans don't know that demons exist oh this lighting not 
really a fan. Sorry, it's early morning, so the lighting's gonna be questionable. I am enjoying the fantasy elements, apart from like, I think the, I'm not even sure if it's a plot hole, but like, I don't understand why humans don't realize demons exist if they know that gargoyles exist. But yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about it right now. I think I can probably finish it like around midday. I mean, I say that I will probably end up being like two o'clock and I'll be like, okay, I'm done. But yeah, it's definitely not like anything I've read recently. It's very different to the books that I usually read at the moment. The closest thing I can think of is maybe like the Vampire Academy series, but you know, like the fantasy that I've been reading recently. So like Glint and Once Upon a Broken Heart, it's all like high fantasy. And so this is really different to those books. And I think I'm more in like a high fantasy era. I don't know though, I don't know. I'm open, I'm open to like exploring heaps more fantasy books that I haven't read before. But I'm going to keep reading. I think I might hang out with my patrons again today, but I'm just gonna try finish this and then move on to maybe one of the books that I'm already in the middle of. So something like All's Well or Love in the Big City. I did read more of my Kindle book last night, but like literally probably about like 10 pages before immediately passing out. So not really enough to like talk about. But yeah, I'm gonna get back to reading and I'll let you guys know how it all goes. I'm about to go live for a reading sprint. I'm so excited. I'm over halfway through this now and I think I'm gonna move on to this next. Hello everyone. So I just finished lunch and I also finished White Hot Kiss I think around like one o'clock. It's now 1.15. I finished this. I think I'm gonna give it three stars, but like tell me why I want to continue the series. I can't explain it. Like technically it wasn't like great, but I had so much fun and I was explaining this to some friends. I think there's a difference between like a five star I had a lot of fun and like a three star I had a lot of fun. And that doesn't mean that like I won't want to continue the series of the three star book, but I still had a lot of fun in. There were just bits that annoyed me, but as far as the story story goes it was good and I want to know what happens I don't know I really enjoyed it it wasn't great but I enjoyed it and I feel like that's really valid you know I say quite often that I like to I read quite critically you know I have quite a critical mind when it comes to like reading books and stuff and I think that is still true but that doesn't mean that I need to only be reading like literary fiction because I still think that you can read like really fun genres and critique those fun genres even though you're just reading them for fun like I can't help thinking critically about things and I can't help like pulling apart books in a sense that sounds like way harsher than I meant it to sound like I can't help thinking about like the technicalities of a book but I still have so much fun doing that and I do read for enjoyment and not like academia. So me like critiquing a book is fun for me. And I think sometimes people can like get that a bit, a little bit misconstrued. Like obviously I'm not reading this to have my brain turned upside down, you know, it's just a bit of fun and I liked it. I liked the bit of fun that I read, but yeah, just, there were just some lines that I was like, no, I, I, I can't, I can't deal with this. And our main character was definitely a bit of a wet sock. Like she would describe herself and she would be like, everyone always says I look like an elf from Lord of the Rings or I look like an anime character, but I'm just like so average. Shut up, babe, shut up. But it was still a good time. I could look past those things to enjoy it. So don't worry, I'm not gonna do any impulse purchasing and like go and buy the rest of the series. Um, I think I'm gonna look up like the second book on Goodreads and if the like synopsis sounds good, then I'll probably buy it. Anyways, <laughs> I had a fun time. Three stars. Sometimes I've had so many five stars this month. Sometimes you just need a three star palette cleanser. And this is exactly what that was. And it was great. Now I'm going to move on to Love in the Big City, but I'm really tired. I don't know, I'm feeling really tired. So I think I'm gonna go read in bed. And I know that that is kind of like dangerous because I'll be in bed. I could easily fall asleep at any moment, but I think it'll be good just to like finish this lying down somewhere. And also I recently got new bed sheets and they're so fun and cool and I want to be in them. Anyway, I'm gonna go lie down and I'll read this. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm excited to continue with this book. I'm on page 82. It is a like 240 page book. If it's, pro it's probably like 130 at this stage now um, after talking. It's 120. If it's 120 now, I think I can finish this at like three and then I'll probably move on to all's well. I'll let you know how I go. I'm really excited. Second book done. Hey. So I've gotten up to part three of Love in the Big City. And I think I briefly explained to you guys what it was about earlier, but essentially it's like we follow our main character, the narrator, and he is a gay man living in Seoul. 
in South Korea and I believe each part of this book is gonna be like basically just a story of him and like someone that he's loved in his life. So like the first part was like his best friend, the second part was this like other dude. That's kind of what I think is gonna happen. I'm like just over halfway but like obviously I've only read two parts so far so like I don't know. It seems like there's a character called Gyuho that features in the third part. Anyway I am still really enjoying it but I'm just getting so tired. I don't even think it's because I've gone to bed like I, I don't even think that's the reason I'm just like really tired so I think I'm gonna go get a drink like a coffee or an energy drink or something and just drink that while I continue to read I don't think I'm gonna finish this by three o'clock it's nearly three o'clock I just keep kind of like getting distracted that's sometimes the curse of these 24 hour readathons is that like my mind just loses focus so quickly and I don't intend for it to it just happens anyway I'm gonna go get a beverage and drink it while I finish this and then it gets dark really early now because it's like we're heading into winter so I think it'll be fun to like once I finish this like sit up on the couch with like some candles and stuff going and just like set the vibe for the last like hours of the readathon. Let's finish this. Let's get this done. I am enjoying it like a lot. Like I think the writing is really good, but I'm just I'm just losing focus a little bit. I, I, when I first started it, I was like, okay, five stars, and I'm not really feeling that vibe anymore. Um, but that's not to say it's bad. It's just like sometimes a five star is a vibe, <laughs> and this was the vibe earlier. Okay, I'm rambling now. I'm just gonna get a drink. Hey, so I finished Love in the Big City. Yes, I stayed in bed the entire time. It ended up being a really beautiful love story between our main character and the character that got introduced in the next part. It was, yeah, it was really something. It ended up being quite a melancholic book. Like I'm kind of left feeling kind of sad, but not in a way that like is annoying, like not in a way, not in a bad way, in like a good way. Like it definitely made me feel things. I don't know, I thought this book was really good. I am really grateful to the person who recommended it to me. I I don't know, I really, really enjoyed my time reading it. I know I'm not really saying intelligent things right now. Usually towards the end of my 24 hour readathons, I do start getting quite mentally lazy. And that's really what I'm feeling right now. I also got quite distracted and then Ben came home. So that was just like more distraction because we were just like talking about our days and like sharing stuff about our day. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. Like it was really good and I really enjoyed it, but not the four stars. Like I can't compare it to the Cat Who Saved books, which just has the biggest place in my heart right now. But yeah, I think I'm actually gonna get out of bed now. I'm I'm gonna get up and I think maybe make a cup of tea, I think. I'm not sure. I'm gonna do something, but I'm going to continue with All's Well by Mona Awad. I have like three hours left of the readathon, so I feel like that just feels like the most appropriate thing to do now. Anyway, let's get this 24 hour readathon finished. Also, third book finished. Who is she? I usually only really get through two books. Who is she? Who is she? just finished dinner. I have a couple more hours left. I've gotten up to page 110 of All's Well and I'm enjoying it so much. I have so much to say about it but I'm saving most of that for my Patreon exclusive video of All's Well because this is our monthly book club pick but it's just so good. Like Mona Awad is so talented. Already I'm liking this so much better than Bunny and I think it's because it's just very like me vibes. Like the subject matter, the everything is just so me vibes. It's like all of my interests. And like the fact that it's horror as well. It's not really that scary at the moment. It's more just a bit weird, but I feel like it's classic Mona Award style. Like I didn't find Bunny that scary and I'm not really finding this that scary, but I'm definitely finding it weird and like it's a really nice like exploration in like the horror genre. But anyway, I'm just feeling yuck. I've been in my pajamas all day. So I think I'm gonna have a shower and wash my hair and then just settle down in bed and do some more reading maybe settle down on the couch and do some more reading I'm gonna do that and then I will probably do my like proper wrap-up of the 24 hours and all the books I read and more like final thoughts on this tomorrow 
which I know means that this isn't like really a 24 hour reading vlog, but it is. I've read for 24 hours. I'm just gonna do my wrap up when I look nice because I don't look nice right now. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow when I have a bit more to say. Hello everyone, it's the next morning and I got up to a little bit more in all's well. I got up to page 155 and I'm just enjoying it so much. There are so many twists and turns in here that I'm so not expecting. Like I genuinely believed that this would be some sort of retelling of Macbeth, but I really don't see it being all that Macbethy right now, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's really not giving Macbeth and I don't think it's supposed to. I think I just like got that completely wrong. It's so good. I've read All's Well That Ends Well, unfortunately, I hate that play, but I don't really remember it all that well. I think I blocked it out because of how much I hate it, but I don't believe that this is also a retelling of All's Well That Ends Well. I don't think it's a retelling of any Shakespeare it's just a book that features lots of Shakespeare in it. So I definitely got that wrong about the book, but it's still so good. Like that's not the reason why I picked it up or anything. So I'm still just really, really enjoying it. I'm so glad that I'm reading this with like a whole group of people because I feel like there's gonna be so much to discuss at the end of it. And even though I didn't read as much as I thought I would, like I didn't finish it or anything, I'm still really happy with the progress that I made in the 24 hour readathon. Anyways, I thought let's do a little wrap up for the 24 hour readathon. I'm sorry if I didn't like vlog that much during this one. I feel like this is one of my most successful readathons in terms of reading, like recently, but um, I didn't do all that much vlogging. So I do apologize if this video is a bit shorter than I thought it was gonna be. But here's a little wrap up. We read four books. We completed three and we read some of a fourth book. So first of all, we started with my new favorite book of all time, The Cat Who Saved Books. This I obviously rated five out of five stars. I am going to say to anyone watching this video, please read this book. It will take you like a couple of hours at most and it's so good and so, so worth it. I absolutely loved this. So obviously a five out of five stars. Then I read White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which was actually so much more fun than I thought it was going to be. When I first started reading it, I was like, oh no, one star incoming. And then I rated it at three stars, which was a really pleasant surprise. If anyone was wondering, I did indeed purchase the next two in the series. It's just fun. It's just so fun. And I feel like that would be a really good way to get some just entertainment in my life. Like if I consider this a masterpiece, this is like, you know, one of those brilliant movies I've watched. And then this is like watching Love Island. Then I read Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park. It kind of made me a little bit depressed. <laughs> but was still such a such a good read. I rated this four out of five stars. It was excellent and I can't wait to spend some time with this as well, like in terms of just some time away from it so I can think about it because already I've like had so many thoughts about it since reading it and like remembered so many things and been like, oh yeah, that was fantastic. I loved that. So another four star read, really, really happy to have read this one. And then obviously still read quite a few pages of All's Well and I'm anticipating this being a five star read as well. So all in all, like quite a successful readathon, like not really any duds. Like if the worst book we read was White Hot Kiss, like I'm not surprised, but I'm also like really happy with the time I spent with this one. I wouldn't consider it a bad time at all. It was, it was a good time. So yeah, the four books that I read in the 24 hour readathon. So thank you so much everyone who watched this video. I hope you had a really entertaining time. I hope you potentially put some new books on your TBR. But yeah, again, thank you so much. A uh, reminder that all my socials are linked down below as well as my Patreon. So if you've been watching this and you're like, I'm jealous of like all the reading sprints that like Jamie's been doing and like, where can I get in on that? My Patreon is where you get in on it. And also if you are interested in like the times and dates that I do my 24 hour readathons, I always put it on my Patreon. Like I have this, the new perk basically is that we do my 24 hour readathons together. So if you like these videos and you want to take part, link down below. But yeah, again, thank you so, so, so much everyone for watching. I've thanked you like four times in this outro, so I'm just going to end it now. <laughs> I love you all so much and I will see you very soon in the next video.